Uh, so yeah, I will just uh, give some introductory um, remarks on the project and <clears throat> what we've achieved so far. We started on the 1st September 2020, so we are a bit more than one year in. Um, as a, so yeah, sorry, the project is on designing international law and ethics into military applications of artificial intelligence. So our three main disciplines are uh, law, ethics, and computer science. Uh, and the scope, um, well, say the thematic scope of research is AI in the military domain. Um, as a reminder, we don't look just at autonomous weapon system, also known as killer robots and very, very present in the media discourse, but uh, more uh, generally at all existing and potential applications of AI in uh, military functions. It's uh, still a very highly topical uh, subject. It's uh, over, over the news in the past uh, year and a half. We've seen, um, you know, weekly um, uh, news and policy debates on this topic. Our core objectives uh, are first uh, in a research uh, domain to identify why, where, and how we should maintain human agency over military AI. I will um, explain that in more details in the next slide, uh, but also um, in terms of um, interdisciplinary research, we want to bridge gaps and make connections between law, ethics, and computer science. And in terms of impact, we want to bridge uh, move from policy to, sorry, from principle to practice and finally to policy. Uh, our main research questions concern first why um, uh, it is essential to maintain human agency and that consists in conceptualizing the nature and function of human agency over AI from a philosophical point of view. We have a postdoctoral researcher um, working on this question more generally. And then we um, uh, have a strong legal element in the in the project, which seeks to apply and interpret international law as it exists in relation to military AI at all its stage from development, procurement, and deployment. Um, and there's um, notably two PhD candidates conducting individual research projects on the legal aspects of military AI. And finally, how to technically ensure that military uh, technologies can be designed and deployed in line with uh, law and ethics. And for this, we have uh, Dr. Thomas Zurek, who will present later, who has a background in computer science. Uh, so this is a full research team. Not everybody uh, can be here today. Um, yes, so I, as I mentioned, Tomas, who will present later, uh, uh, Dr. Sajet Sultanzane is our researcher in uh, philosophy and ethics and um, uh, the Magdalena Taylor and Claudia are both with a background in law, in law just as me. Um, some brief highlights of year one. Uh, we've launched a lecture series, which has been very successful, uh, all online, but that also allows us to reach a very global audience, unlike if we were organizing our events in the ASR Institute in The Hague, so we actually see a lot of um, yeah, some positive aspects of the online environment in terms of outreach. Uh, we've had uh, conference, expert meetings, publications. Uh, you will, uh, I can refer you to our website, acerpantenal slash dilemma for all publications, presentation, updates, activities, upcoming events. Um, some highlights uh, that I would like to point briefly today is that recently there was an uh, advisory report um, published by some to advisory commission to the Dutch government. Uh, and as part of this advisory report, we were uh, consulted. So we drafted a short paper that was uh, substantively used as basis for part of the report. So we see that even if it's just a bit more than one year, we already see policy impact. So we're quite proud of that. Um, and finally, recently, uh, uh, three, four members of the team delivered uh, a presentation together at an interdisciplinary conference on AI and law. And we, you will actually hear a little bit more about the topic of this presentation um, as I give the floor to Tomash for the rest of this presentation. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now I try to switch to my presentation. Okay. Is it, is it, can you see it? I hope. Yeah, it's a uh, bit okay. small, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can th thank you. My name is Tomasz Dorek. I'm I'm from uh, I'm a postdoc researcher in the in the, in the Dilemma project. 
I'm here, I'm in a dilemma from, from the 1st of September of this year. And now today I, I'm going to present you the results of, of, the, of, of our work during the last few months. And uh, 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 this was this results were presented in the Xyla workshop, which was been, uh, uh, just means it's uh, uh, explainable and uh, responsible uh, AI in law, uh, which was uh, 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 organized in conjunction with the URIX conference, which was one of the most AI in law, AI in law conferences uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, and the topic of, of, of my presentation is the computational modeling of proportionality analysis under international humanitarian law for military decision support systems. Uh, okay. Uh, now, we, now we are witnesses of, of um, rapid growth of AI-based uh, AI based system in general, but uh, especially AI-based military systems. Uh, someone can say that uh, 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 fully autonomous, uh, 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 fully autonomous uh, weapons are just around the corner, and 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 there's a short time, so we, uh, they, they will appear in the world and they, they appear in the battlefield. And the point is that uh, uh, there's a strong necessity uh, of the system, which making autonomous decisions, uh, will take into consideration uh, 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 also moral and uh, and legal rules, especially international humanitarian law. And that was the basis of 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 of, uh, of our attempts, and and we uh, on the basis of that we we stated two main goals. The first goal is, was in, to introduce an initial attempt to, uh, at the development of computational model of such a system. Uh, and the model presented in this paper would be a, a, a part can be seen as a part of a more complex framework comprising the hybrid decision support system. And the second goal. Is, it, is to introduce a discussion of requirements which uh, international humanitarian law uh, impose on, uh, or should impose on military AI-based uh, decision support system or in general military uh, military uh, uh, autonomous systems. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, now we focus on the we are focused on the, on the on the on the on the small small fragment of uh, IHL international humanitarian law. I mean the rule of proportionality, uh, and in general, uh, 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 armed for, uh, armed forces should avoid attacks which uh, uh, which may cause too much harm to civilians uh, or to civilian objects, and uh, 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 and uh, uh, rule, of, rule of proportionality says that. Uh, 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 an attack, in order to be lawful, in, uh, uh, in uh, incidental harm to the civilians cannot be excess, excessive to anticipated military advantage, direct and uh, and uh, 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 and concrete military advantage. This is very general. Uh, this is very general uh, 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 rule, and and uh, uh, for us, for this research, the important, uh, the most important was what we called the weighting exercise. I mean, the balancing between those uh, incidental harm and military advantage. The problem is that both incidental harm and and, uh, and military advantage are not precisely defined, and it's very difficult to, to create a catalog or something like that of 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 what what can be understood as a military advantage or, or harm to civilians. Um, and this was the basis or starting point of our of our research. And uh, 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 in our, in the, uh, we are going to introduce the model, uh, 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 can be, which can be seen as a as a part of more complex hybrid decision support system. And the, the main idea is that the model will, uh, will re reflect the requirements of international international humanitarian law. International humanitarian law, and. Uh, 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 when we uh, uh, look at the, the research on artificial intelligence in general, we can distinguish two main research directions. The first one, say the oldest one, uh, or the older one, is the uh, are the knowledge-based systems, uh, and the, and the uh, uh, more recent and uh, much more popular now is uh, are the machine learning-based or data-driven uh, systems. Uh, both of those of those approaches to AI. Uh, uh, have their own uh, pros and cons, and and uh, our in our uh, although um, although currently most AI based military decision support system are purely purely uh, data driven approaches, 
they usually use uh, uh, deep learning neural networks uh, which are which are uh, which have uh, which, which are very um, efficient but they have lots of drawbacks for example they work as a, as a, as a black box and we don't understand or even we, do, we cannot predict how the, how will they behave in the in the unpredicted circumstances uh, uh, and and uh, uh, we argue we are going to uh, create a system which will be hybrid in the sense that it will, uh, it, the system will be encompass both a knowledge based part and a machine learning based part in order to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to merge uh, 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 positive aspects of both both approaches to to ai uh, okay uh, okay how this how the process of decision of decision making of commander looks looks like if we if we can imagine a commander uh, uh, while he, he should make a decision he first he have to identify the set of available decisions or or courses of actions or or, or what he can, what what he can do and then he usually predicts the uh, expected results of 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 his decisions with such a knowledge every decision option should should be evaluated in the light of anticipated military advantage and potential harm and on, on the basis of, the, of that the the commander uh, have to um, have to make the, the, those the balance between those and 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 to, uh, to evaluate if the attack is excessive or not of course the, the the key point is that how to measure and to compare military advantage with uh, uh, in, uh, incidental harm uh, in a computational system and we are going to uh, in the, the, the key the key concept uh, on the basis of which we are going to to model our system is to use values as a as a as a, as a concept which uh, inter intermediate concept which represent an abstraction of target target situation uh, unlike it is in, in most uh, uh, ai based approaches to values uh, we are going to mm, mm, to treat values not as a binary uh, as binary, which value is, is promoted or or not, but as a uh, as a we can, we, we mm, assume that values can be satisfied to a certain degree. Uh, we also use values as a cost, which allows for connecting machine learning based part and knowledge based part of the system. Uh, values can be seen as a something which is in between those two those two parts of the systems. And now, I present you the very 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 general structure of the system. Uh, 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 the, in general, the system can be can be divided into two main parts. The first part is the cognitive, uh, something what we call the cognitive part. It's the part which is resp responsible for 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 analysis of a of a, of a situation. Uh, and the second part is the reasoning part, the part which is responsible for uh, uh, for evaluate uh, uh, for uh, uh, mm, 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 in in our case for weighting exercise. I mean, uh, this part was responsible for reasoning process, for representing the reasoning process. What uh, what the cognitive part includes? In the cognitive part, we assume that we have uh, input signals. I mean, signal intelligence, uh, general circumstances of a case. Uh, they are they are input the option generation module. Uh, option generation module will create uh, the the set of available options, uh, uh, which. Uh, 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 on the basis of which the another model uh, result pred prediction model will create the set of possible results of of uh, of, of decisions made by a commander uh, uh, and uh, uh, alongside with the probabilities of those results uh, and and uh, and those results will be an input to the evaluation model the goal of evaluation model is to is to uh, 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 is to mm, mm, derive or to 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 to, to compute or uh, uh, to generate the uh, the levels of satisfaction of values. I mean, in the sense that we can, we can imagine that the, a particular decision will result in a particular results, and we are going to evaluate those results in the light of values. Uh, are, are the, the, to to which extent the values are promoted by such a such a such a in fact such a decision, and. Uh, 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 how those those three parts will be will be will be will be designed we believe that the first two uh, models i mean i mean option generation model and the result prediction model can be created on the basis of of uh, uh, model model based uh, reinforcement learning uh, 
uh, however, the evaluation model, which is probably the most interesting for, for, for point of our research, uh, it can be created on the basis of, um, of a, a, a regression mechanism. Uh, however, uh, in order to create such a, such a mechanism, we need a set of uh, training data, a set of training data which uh, uh, will con uh, con uh, consists of uh, 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 the results of the decisions, uh, along with uh, 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 with the um, uh, uh, results annotated with the with the uh, uh, or labeled uh, 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 with the levels of satisfaction of values. We believe that the, the, those labels can be done by human annotators which which uh, makes makes uh, 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 as as a impact of a humans on the how how the 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 system should evaluate the, that uh, that uh, a particular a particular result of a decision okay thomas mm -hmm. uh, your your time is uh, you're okay, running out of time i'm yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm i'm close to the finish okay yeah. Uh, and and uh, that evaluate the result of that evaluation model and and probabilities they they go into the weighting exercise in which uh, in which we uh, uh, bal we are balancing we are balancing the, the the results of our of of uh, of, of uh, and 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 uh, yeah we are balancing and their uh, decision is the attack lawful or unlawful. We introduced during our research. Uh, I skipped those uh, complex complex equations. Just just uh, 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 just we just have that uh, simple simple balancing equation, and then what is important in our system? In our system, we have uh, 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 in our system we have um, two two important two important points. The, the first one is that the evaluation is is based on the on the human level data. Uh, and the weighting exercise gives us, uh, 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 which is created on the basis of, of, of equation of our, our, our model, uh, is the weighting exercise gives us uh, uh, the, the explainability of a decision, thanks to which uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, thanks to which our, our system uh, can be um, can be explainable and have something like semi-objective standard of a, of, a, of a rational commander. And that's all. Thank you very much.